We're going to turn now to Sheriff Paul Babu of Pinal County. A lot of this material you're about to hear, you will not hear anywhere else. And I know because I've checked. Now, the Arizona Daily Star did run a version of this story about Sheriff Babu that I'm about to bring you. Did run it this morning. A small article buried on page A7. The Tucson Sentinel, which is a Tucson treasure in my opinion, also had something on it. Um, I found maybe two other mentions on what I would call mainstream news sites in the entire nation. No radio, no television, no nothing. If you were to believe that the media were in a conspiracy to keep you from knowing about the democratic processes that might or might might not lead to immigration reform, one of the things you might believe is that they take a story like this and not cover it. Well, I'm not saying there's a conspiracy, but I am saying that they didn't cover this, and there were some things that came out of this House Judiciary Committee hearing that Sheriff Babu was invited to be the lead-off witness for that were just damned interesting. So, were I still running a TV station newsroom in Tucson, it would be my lead story today. But I ain't, and you won't see it on TV, period. At least, unless somebody's planning a story today, they haven't done it yet. You will hear it on this radio program, because, and I am going to lead with it. So let's get this out of the way. Here are my politics, just so you know. Here's my label. You can pin the following on my shirt, so you know where I'm coming from as I bring you the story. I believe in immigration. I also believe the laws on the books should be enforced until such time as the American people decide to change them. I do believe they should be changed. But until they are, we should enforce what's already on the books. And to a lot of people, someone like me sounds saying something like that, sounds like a a wild-eyed, paranoid right-winger. I'm going to further confess that for the most part, not in everything, but for the most part, I am a fan of Sheriff Babu. Now, this sets me apart from my good friend John C. Scott, whom I love and respect like a brother, and whose show precedes mine. Um, He does not agree with me about Sheriff Paul Babu. Power Talk 1210 welcomes all viewpoints, and there's room for both of us on this one, I think. Now, Paul uh, Babu went to Washington yesterday to speak to the House Judiciary Committee about border enforcement and immigration. The reception he got there in Washington, in my opinion, tells you absolutely everything you need to know about what's going on right now with the subject of immigration in our country. Why the Obama administration is not enforcing immigration laws, how it's skirting even those laws it's claiming to enforce, how this situation came about, and why it will be almost impossible to do anything about it. So let's begin. First thing that happened... Sheriff Babu introduced himself. Actually, one of the congressmen introduced him, and then he introduced himself further. He set the stage by showing how Pinal County, which I hope you know, hope you're not geographically challenged, you know it's just right north of our county, is on the front lines in the war against Mexican drug cartels. Let's hear from the sheriff. Our county uh, led the largest drug bust in the history of Arizona, $3 billion against the Sinaloa cartel. Uh, and we, in one day, arrested 76 members of the Sinaloa cartel carrying 108 weapons, uh, not just handguns. These are scoped rifles and AK-47s, two of which were traced back to fast and furious operation. Now, the sheriff said this is evidence that the border is not, contrary to some of the claims you've heard, is not the most secure it's ever been. He told how drug scouts keep lookouts on the hilltops and mountain peaks in his county paving the way for cartel drug shipments. And then he asked a really good question. He posed a really good question. How in the world did and does a county sheriff find himself on the front line of a drug war with foreign drug smugglers, a battle the feds should be fighting? When I tell a story like that, uh, having served a tour in Iraq and commanded soldiers in the Army, uh, almost appears I'm telling a story of of some worn, torn area. Uh, This is on American soil, and that's what's uh, so disruptive is the fact that here as as a sheriff, where our primary job is to answer 911 calls, how on earth did we get here to this place that local law enforcement is leading the effort to fight criminal syndicates from a foreign nation on American soil? Sheriff Babu then challenged the Department of Homeland Security on its statements that it is currently prioritizing the deportation of alien criminals. 
We had a, a mass release two years ago of criminals that had everywhere uh, from rape charges, two that were charged with manslaughter, convictions for child molestation, financial uh, felony crimes, aggravated assault against law enforcement, and armed robbery released into my county. Now, interestingly, here's where Paul Babu and I have something in common. Like all other journalists, I cannot get the Department of Homeland Security to answer questions, return phone calls, or even give out its phone number in my case. I've told you those stories. Nor can I get information out of the department of any kind. Five months ago, I filed a series of 40 Freedom of Information requests. DHS acknowledged receipt, denied my request for expedited handling, and then went silent. Nothing from them since. It's just completely ignored my 40 requests. Now, I'm just a radio reporter. You would think that a county sheriff could get the feds to cough up information and answer questions about law enforcement matters, right? Babu told the congressman that is not the case. They stiff arm him, too. I demanded the information, the names and the criminal history of this information. It has been refused to this date. I, as a sheriff who sworn an oath to protect the people of my county, should have a right to that information. The sheriff said the bottom line is DHS is not enforcing even the most basic immigration law in his county. How does he know? Because his deputies keep running into the same undocumented immigrant criminals crossing the desert again and again and again and again and again. Five, ten, fourteen, sixteen times. These are the illegals that don't be scratching your head why they keep coming back. Uh, these are my deputies are arresting them for state crimes. Uh, this one had been arrested 16. Now it's the 17th time. In law enforcement, we call these clues, right? This is a clue that there is no enforcement. This is this past year, folks. And keep in mind the kind of people he's talking about. The sheriff is referring to foreign nationals charged with crimes. The very ones, these are the very people the Obama administration wants you to believe it's so busy rounding up and chasing down, catching, that it had to write five million other undocumented migrants off the list of people it's even thinking about deporting. Because it's got to get after those criminal immigrants. Babu said DHS is releasing 30 immigrant criminals into his county every single day. 30 or more. 30 to 50 criminals released every day in my county from ICE facilities. And this was told to me from the director for Arizona for ERO, John Gurley. He's not going to be happy that I shared this information. Two separate phone calls. These were the people that everybody, including our president, said were the bad actors. That if anybody, the ones who've committed serious violent felonies or multiple misdemeanors, have to be sent back to their country of origin then how is it okay now that we're releasing 30 to 50 of these individuals a day right now? The bottom line here, the sheriff said, is secure the border. And he says the government can do it by enforcing the laws already on the books. And I would urge this this committee and this Congress to stand up as a lawmaking body is to enforce the laws, just as you expect me and every other law enforcement officer locally to do, and secure the border. Now that, that marked the end of the sheriff's prepared statements. And then later, a congressman got to ask him questions. One of the Republicans asked him again about all those undocumented criminals DHS is releasing back into the community. Babu rose to the occasion. He said the release amounts to a jail break, a massive one. Uh, It's outrageous what has been allowed to happen. And if I had a mass jail break in my county and let out hundreds, if not thousands of violent criminals, many of them, I would be arrested. And this has to, has to stop. Uh, we saw... In, in effect, the administration has ordered the largest jailbreak in American history. The largest jailbreak in American history. Now, not only is the government releasing Im- illegal immigrant criminals on a massive scale, the sheriff said the government is deliberately keeping him and, their, and you in the dark about what they're doing, about all of it. Well, I'm still waiting for the names of those criminals, and we'll never get it. We'll never get these names, and the reason why is, is because we'll then connect 2,228 criminals to new crimes that have been committed against our citizens all across this country. Now, the idea that such a release might pose a public threat, that releasing those kinds of people, letting them go, that that might pose a public threat is not just theoretical. I've been telling you about the case of Apollinar 
Alto Morano. He's an undocumented immigrant involved in a burglary, kidnapping, and rape in Phoenix two years ago. The guy should have had the highest priority for deportation. He was undocumented, and he was convicted. After he was convicted, DHS let, let him go, right? This is the kind of guy that said, oh, we're deporting him. We're busy deporting them. That's what they've been telling us, right? They let this one go. That decision cost the life of a convenience store clerk. Alta Morano is now charged with killing. And oh, yeah, the sheriff brought that up. Here's one of those cases, this illegal that Ms. Vaughn spoke about, uh, El Tamarano, who's 29 from Mexico. He, it wasn't just robbery that he pled guilty to. He kidnapped a woman for over a week and sexually assaulted her, according to the victim. We're in America. You believe the victims. This guy executed this 21-year-old young man who worked as a store clerk in a quick trip convenience store and shot him, murdered him over a pack of cigarettes. As I and, say, and then there, ICE won't even answer to, yeah. all, and all we're hearing is excuses on how this guy was released. And we're outraged in our state, and this just underscores yeah. the fact of what's going on, that these people aren't held accountable. Right. Serious, violent offenders. There is absolutely no excuse for this administration to perpetuate those policies. That was one of the Republican congressmen talking to him. Now, what's even more interesting than the sheriff's testimony was the Democratic reaction. Some of those details you will not hear anywhere else, and I'll have them next. Okay, part two, congressional reaction, as the Forest Car Show continues. In the last segment, what did we hear? Pinal County Sheriff Paul Babu told Congress a lot of the same things I've been telling you on this program. Now, my sources, my news all comes from articles on mainstream news organization websites, reputable websites. I, I will read on occasion on occasion from the ultra-left Huffington Post, but I stay away from the ultra-right Breitbart News, the Drudge Report, and all of that. The sheriff's information comes from his own department's arrests, their experiences in the field, and also what DHS officials or Border Patrol officials are willing to tell him on the few occasions when they actually talk to him. So what did he say? What did you hear him say? Pinal County is on the front line of a war against foreign drug smugglers, an effort that the feds are giving them, in which they're giving them little or no help. Despite its promises to prioritize the deportation of criminal aliens, DHS is releasing 30 to 50 of them every day into his county alone, he says. He can't find out who they are or what they've done until one of them kills someone, as Apollinar Altamirano is accused of doing. Now, how do you think the Democrats reacted? They reacted the way politicians always react. When they're hearing something they don't like, but can't immediately refute. I mean, if they can say, oh, what you just said is not true, and here are the facts to show that, then they would. But if they can't, what do you do? You go to plan B. Unable to question the facts, they simply attack the speaker. Personally. It's called an ad hominem attack. You can't attack the facts, so you attack the person and hope that your attack will be successful enough for people to disbelieve the facts. It's a really simple tactic. The phrase is Latin. This goes back 2,000 years. It works. That's why they do it. So that's what the Democrats proceeded to do, or at least try to do, to Sheriff Babu. And I will say, yeah, they, they landed a glove on him or two. One after, the, one after another, the Democrats took shots at him. First was Democrat Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas. She wanted to know, yeah, aren't you the sheriff that told the public about the arrival of those undocumented immigrant children in Oracle? Wasn't that you? Listen now to how she describes what happened as the result of the sheriff's decision not to keep the public in the dark about a matter the public clearly was interested in. Listen to what she says happened. The public pronouncement, which I would offer to say that the responsibilities of law enforcement officers are to be protect and serve, uh, no matter who comes into the territory as long as they are innocent, um, provoked a, a, a despicable scene of individuals who were anti-immigration and then, of course, uh, those who uh, were supporting it. So did you catch that? The sheriff's announcement resulted in what she called a, quote, despicable scene 
End quote. Those were her words. A despicable scene, which she goes on to specify, consisted of the following. People protesting against illegal immigration and people protesting in favor of it. Now, in my view, describing public protests as despicable is a remarkable statement coming from an African-American civil rights leader, a leader in a movement that has depended on public protest and even civil disobedience as its primary tactics. But if somebody's protesting something that she disagrees with, this congressman says that's despicable. That's a despicable display. For his part, the sheriff did not apologize for making the disclosure that led to those protests. Congresswoman Jackson Lee then demanded to know, did you protect those children from the protesters? The sheriff said, absolutely, I did. And then she demanded to see if he could, he wanted her, him to provide her with a news report, a news article documenting that he had protected the children. That's right. She is not willing to believe this elected official, this sheriff, when he says his department provided protection unless he can send her a news clipping to that effect. Now, I'm pretty sure that if protesters had hurt any children, that would have made the news. That's just me. Here's the exchange. I mean, you're denying this, that you did not say it or there was not a scene with these youngsters. Did you provide protection for these yeah, youngsters absolutely. going to the YMCA camp? Absolutely, and through the, the chair and congresswoman. Well, will you submit that, us an article that shows that you provided protection to those youngsters because uh, it is indicated that your uh, expression uh, provoked a scene. And when you listen to what she's saying, what you start to realize is she's not talking about physical protection. She's talking about protecting the kids from seeing that some Americans do not welcome illegal immigration. And that some do. That's what she feels the sheriff had an obligation to do, is to slap his hands over their eyes and keep them from knowing that. And the kids in question, turned out, they weren't even immigrants. The kids who actually saw the protest were on a YWCA bus, bus or a YMCA bus. They got to see free speech in action. Oh, my God. We're going to take some news. When we come back, I'll have more congressional reaction to Sheriff Paul Babu's testimony. Stay with us. Okay, so where were we? We were talking about Congress and Congress's reaction to Sheriff Paul Babu from Pinal County, who went up there and said that um, criminal illegal aliens are running around, they're getting released by ICE, they're giving us a hard time, and they're killing people. To which the Democratic congressman responded by attacking him personally, since they couldn't attack the facts. The facts are really not in dispute. So they attacked the sheriff. And Congressman, uh, one of the congresswomen, uh, Congresswoman uh, Jackson Lee, is in the process of basically making the point that that rascally sheriff is the same guy that announced that a group of undocumented children was coming into a particular center, thereby allowing a quote-unquote despicable scene to unfold, which the immigrant children never even saw because they were brought in secretly later But a bus full of YMCA kids accidentally saw. So they were subjected to the horrible sight of people holding up protest signs. See, they didn't, they didn't know they lived in America where free speech is possible until this, until this rascally sheriff made this announcement and made an actual spontaneous protest or allow, you know, basically led to a a spontaneous protest, both for and against a particular issue happened right in front of the eyes of these horrified children who did not know such a thing was even possible. So, it gets better than that, right? Not only did the sheriff not protect those poor kids from seeing protest signs, it gets better. Next up was Congressman, Democratic Congressman Hank Johnson, who demanded to know of several of the witnesses, the very first thing he did, there were four witnesses, one after another he asked him, aren't you Republican? Because, you know, any witness that's a Republican, you should just know they're Republican as you're listening to what they're saying. Right? I mean, if a sheriff is telling you that illegal immigration is causing him some issues, and he's a Republican, well, of course he's going to say that. That's his point. He didn't put it that way, but that absolutely was his point. Let's listen. I'm a registered Republican, yes. Okay, and sure. 
Babo, you too, correct? Became the first Republican sheriff of my county. All right. Okay. And um, now, Sh Sheriff Babo, uh, you know, you, you are um, a strict opponent of immigration reform, comprehensive immigration reform, correct? It, through the chair, comprehensive immigration reform, as I understand it, it, it you may re be referring well, well, to let me, let me, Gang let, of Eight. Let, 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 let. Now, as you heard, the congressman then interrupted the sheriff. And he goes on to do that a lot. He finally uh, tossed off Babu's answers on the grounds that, oh, well, you're a Republican. No, it, I, I think so that... You if, don't think it's politics. I think that it's enforcement it. of the law. You may be dealing it Well, I mean, we're issue. talking about changing the law so that we can have comprehensive immigration reform, but you are opposed to us doing that, correct? The process, and, and I'll... Are you opposed to us considering comprehensive... In the order that you're doing it, yes. Okay. That the because border needs to be secured there needs first, be and, then, and then you can address that issue okay. after. All right. And that's a, a Republican position, Republican Party position, and you're a Republican, and I understand that. <laughs> that's a Republican position. You're a Republican. <laughs> of course you'd say that. Okay. Then it gets even more interesting. Now, you heard the congressman interrupting the sheriff there a few times. And having just heard Sheriff Babu say his, co his county is at war with foreign drug smugglers on U.S. soil, the congressman, Congressman Johnson, demanded to know why Babu's department needs things like automatic weapons and mine-resistant vehicles. Sheriff Babu looks a little startled. And he says, well, I, actually, I don't. But Johnson kept cutting the sheriff off, not letting him finish his answers until finally the chairman of the committee hearing objected. Why do you need a mine-resistant ambush? We don't. Vehicle? And, okay. and this is so, where... Thank you. And uh, you need... No, sir. Uh, Sheriff, you may answer the question. You no, cannot ask a question and no, then not Mr. allow the witness Mr. to answer it. Mr. Sheriff, Chairman, I wanted answer. a yes or no answer. He answered the question and I'm ready to move on. Sheriff, have you now, answered if, the if question someone... as completely as you would like to? Mr. Chairman, I'm the ready to move on. The gentleman is not recognized. Sheriff, have you answered the question as completely and, as you and would like to? And this is where us and the Chairman, person. regular order, please. Now, incredibly, Congressman Hank Johnson continued to refuse to let the sheriff answer the question as instructed. Babu, Sheriff Babu, tried to answer anyway, as the chairman had just invited him to do. With the congressman, Congressman Hank Johnson, trying to talk over the sheriff. In law enforcement, we have 420,000 residents of my county, and we are the SWAT team for Point of information, all 13 Mr. Uh, law chairman. enforcement agencies, and for high-risk warrants, Barricade situations. Almost never have we used an armored vehicle for anything. To Point of order. With, uh, illegal immigration, Mr. Chairman. Point of order, Mr. Thank chairman. you, Sheriff. So, did you hear the Sheriff's answer? No? Well, don't worry. No one else did either. Which, of course, was exactly what that congressman intended. Do you see why nothing gets done in Washington? But wait, there's more. The next attack came from Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, a Democrat from New York. He wanted to know, Sheriff, didn't you once about five years ago go on a radio program that turned out to be hosted by white supremacists? Once we became aware of any of their past comments, we disavowed any of their who they are, what they stand for. They didn't say any of that on the show. Uh, we were talking about immigration, as we do quite often outside the state via telephone so this is there's no relationship this was one contact that we immediately disavowed any association with now to refute the sheriff's claim that sheriff Bab sheriff babu says he didn't know that the radio hosts were white supremacists right that's what he's saying he's saying this to congress under oath congressman jeffries then reads a quote from an arizona daily star article he reads the quote into the record here it is and then it goes on to quote uh, Mr. Edwards, and says, for Sheriff Babu to change his mind and now regret coming on our show for whatever reason is his right. For him to act as though he had no idea of our ideology is a lie, Edwards said in a written statement on the show's website. That's Mr. Edwards' representation of what took place in advance of your appearance uh, on the show. And then... Having accused the sheriff of lying to Congress, 
Congressman Jeffries refused to allow Sheriff Babu to respond to that accusation. Just cut him off and went on and addressed a question to another witness. Now, in case you miss what the congressman was saying, his point is this. If a white supremacist says one thing and a Republican sheriff says something different, then you should believe, drum roll please, the white supremacist, not the sheriff. Yes, white supremacists are more credible than Republican sheriffs. Now, that is a remarkable implication coming from an African-American. Meanwhile, if any congressman successfully refuted a single fact his Sheriff Babu presented, I've yet to hear it. They simply ignored the facts. After all, who brought those facts to them? A white Republican sheriff. What, are you going to believe him, really? Among the facts that no one disputed during the hearing, and I'm taking the following copy directly from the Arizona Daily Star, one of the very, very few news media to cover this story in the United States of America. The Star article says the sheriff took issue with what he called a mass prison break, and he was referring to the release of certain immigration and customs enforcement detainees starting in 2013. That year, says the Star, ICE released 36,007 convicted criminal immigrants who were facing deportation. The federal data was first disclosed by the Center for Immigration Studies, a conservative group that advocates for less immigration. As of September 2014, 16% had been arrested again for subsequent offenses. 1,000 had been convicted again. This is according to Jessica Vaughn, Director of Policy Studies for the Center. That was from her testimony. Now, in conclusion, I'm just going to say this. This is important stuff, in my opinion. A local Arizona sheriff goes to Congress, is explaining to Congress what's going on in his county with criminal aliens, illegal immigration, and the war on drugs. Explains it to Congress. This is part of the democratic process wherein we decide if we want to change the laws or not. And everybody says, what do we need? Immigration reform. So he goes to participate in that process, gives his testimony, gets the reaction that he got that I just told you, Nobody covers it. Arizona Star, yes. Tucson Sentinel, yes. Power Talk 1210, yes. I defy you to find any other coverage out there, anywhere. Why is that? How does that happen? It's just amazing. Oh, wait. The Huffington Post did make sort of an oblique reference to it. Because remember the congressman I was telling you that was cutting off the sheriff and the chairman objected? and said, no, you cannot cut off the sheriff. He gets to make his answer. The Huffington Post has posted a blog entry from that congressman claiming that he was the one who was cut off and shut down when he's trying to make the point that we don't need to militarize the border. He was shut down. He was the victim here. And had you not heard the testimony that I just played back for you, you would have no idea what was really going on there. That was the sole piece of information that thus far the left-leaning the left leaning Huffington Post has shown any interest in bringing to you out of everything that happened yesterday that a congressman complained that he got cut off when in fact we know that he was stopped from interrupting and cutting off the sheriff whom they had invited to testify. We're going to move on now to some callers. 